बार के Shilapapad is a preeminent and uh, guru or acharya of the, this movement. This movement was founded by him, so everything we do it for his pleasure. And we have to always remind ourselves about his life, his activities, so that we can know how he sacrificed his life for us to enjoy today. Today we have many facilities, many temples all over the world uh, because of his dedication, his sacrifice. So, as good son and good uh, grandson followers, uh, we need to always remember him. Yeah, so the chapter. Swami's departure. Yeah. So Prabhupada told Kitananda he had definitely, definitely decided to go to India via New York as soon as possible. Kitananda packed Swami's, Swami's things and drove Swami down to San Francisco to spend the night at the, at the temple. They will leave the next morning. The temple and even Prabhupada's apartment were very hectic, hectic the night with many devotees and guests wanting to see Prabhupada and dozens of people wanting initiation. When Kitananda advised Prabhupada not to accept himself by doing by going down for the evening program, Prabhupada insisted on at least going to sitting during the Kitan. When he entered the south front, the devotees immediately stopped the Kitan, dropping down offer obeisances. There was a hush. He commanded a new reverence. This might be the last time they will see him. They watched him during the kitan as he played his cattle, singing with them for his last time. The uninitiated wanted to accept him as the Speech master tonight before it was too late. Shri Prabhupada asked for the microphone. No one has had expected him to speak. Kitananda, the only person in the position to restrain him, said nothing and sat before him like the others, submissive and expectant. Prabhupada spoke quietly about his mission under the order of his spiritual master who was bringing Lord Chaitanya movement to America and Krishna had kindly sent him so many sincere souls. I have a few children in India from my family days, he said, but you are my real children. 
Now I'm going to India for a little while. Everyone fixed his attention on Swamiji as he sat before them, leaning against the murderous covered, covered wall, speaking softly. Suddenly the door opened and Ravindra Swarup Napili entered. Everyone knew that Ravindra Swarup wanted to leave Krishna consciousness. He, had, he hadn't taken his initiation bow seriously. He wanted to move on. He didn't want a speech master anymore. The other devotees had discouraged him, but he had persisted. They were incredulous and incredulous. How could he do such a thing on the right on the night before some years departure? I think uh, Ramindra Swarup uh, is very well fixed now in this <laughs> Yeah, Ravindra Swarup fell. It's not, it's not the same. Excuse me, same. it was the first one. Oh, oh. the second one joined it's four years oh, later. Oh, it's another one. It's yeah. another one. Oh, sorry. sorry. The, the, the second one joined four years later. Oh. And so he stayed in the Diksha Bhumi. Oh, so this one he, he, he left? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. so the first one, 67. Ah, yeah, the first one. All right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Have a question? It's the second one. It's the first one. Okay. 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 Okay, good for your clarification. Yeah, thank you. So you might be able to speak a little bit if actually oh. there are two Ravindra for that. Yeah. 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 My first time to hear that we have two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Marabi, some little comment. Yeah. Uh, the one who is there is the one that uh, is the first one or the second one? The one who uh, is the second one. He stole from America uh -huh. and he came to he came to Europe at the time. He was in uh, <laughs> in Germany. Philadelphia. He joined in Philadelphia, but he wasn't coming to Germany. Then he uh, is it in the VR side, Dick Shaguru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it that that is the one that this is this is different from oh, this. Different one. This, this, is one this is sixty seven. Uh -huh. Sixty seven. Sixty seven. Four right. years earlier. Okay. This is different. Okay, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah, Ravindra Swarup fell to the floor to offer verses, but he didn't rise up and sit. He began crawling on his hands and knees towards proper. Ravindra usually has a cavalier manner, and hence, by an, a handsome face, long lost hair and a beard. But now he was rushed and sobbing and crazy. He crawled towards Propa, who sat but two who sat but two steps off the floor on the simple red boat desk. Propa looked at, the, at him with compassion. Come here, my boy. Ravindra crawled up the steps and place his bushy head on Prabhupada's lap. Moves. The devotee watched at, as Prabhupada struck Ravindra's head and the boy cried <coughs> and cried. What's wrong, my, my son? You don't, you don't have to be so unhappy. Ravindra bowed out. I want his sword. Ha! Ah. To her, reach God directly, without anyone in between. Prabhupada continued to part and stroke the boy's head. No, you continue to stay with us if possible. Don't be cra a crazy fellow. Ravindra's weeping subsided 
and Prabhupada continued speaking both to Ravindra and to the emotion struck group in the room. Aman Orma, he said, I may die at any moment, but please, you all carry on this Sankirtan moment. You have to become humble and tolerant. As Lord Chaitanya says, be as humble as a blade of grass and more tolerant than a tree. You must have enthusiasm and patience to push on this Christian conscious philosophy. Suddenly, mm -hmm. Ravindra's tears were gone. He jumped up and dejectedly stood, hesitating for a moment and then hurried out of the, out the door, banging it behind him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. mm, Ravindra Sarup, dramatic exits from Krishna consciousness shocked the, the devotees. Prabhupada sat still and continued speaking to them gravely, asking them to stick together and push on the movement for their own benefits and for others. Whatever they had learned, he said, they should repeat. So I think we have to learn a lesson from here. When, when during the time of uh, Shilapapad, some, some devotees have to leave, it's gone. So now that is not yet, there are many chances for us to you know, live. So I mean, we have to be very, 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 very careful. Maya. Yeah. I remember one, one uh, I read somewhere in the book that uh, Shri Prabhupada was going somewhere with his disciples, some of his disciples. So they came to pay businesses to the deities. Uh, you know, uh, you know, devotees, we just pay businesses mechanically. Less than one minute and we, we woke up. But Shri Prabhupada paid businesses and was always like this, looking at the deities and was you know, crying. So the devotees asked him, why are you crying? Then he said, oh, I'm you know, uh, praying to the deities to protect us. And he said, the difference between me and you is that you guys, you are not afraid of Maya. <laughs> you are not afraid of Maya, you are playing with Maya. You know, my eye is very dangerous. Yeah, so, yeah, we have to be very, very serious because when Prabhupada was alive, still, some devotees have the chance to, to believe this one. Yeah. They realized, perhaps, for the first time, that they were part of the preaching mission. A moment. They were together, not just for good times and good vibration. They had a loving obligation to Swamiji and Krishna. Prabhupada returned to his apartment, which soon became chaotic. It was late. Many people wanted initiation. Mukunda, Jananda, and other temple leaders tried to determine which candidates were sincere. They selected candidates half a dozen at a time and allowed them into proper room. Propart sat behind his little desk, chanted on each person's beads and returned them, giving each person a special name. Kitananda requested him to stop. Further incision could be done through the mail. But Prabhupada said he would continue initiating whoever was present. Mukunda and Jananda set priorities. Some person have been wanting more waiting months to be initiated and were obviously sincere. Others will have no how to to be turned away. John Carter, at the end of the lecture, I was sure that I wanted to be visited, 
And even though there was some talk of being instilled by men, I knew I wanted to have that personal connection with my spiritual master and to be personally instilled by him, personally accepted. I ran up to Mukunda and said, how many are on the list? I would like to get on the list. He said, well, Somiji isn't really taking them in an, any particular order. We are just going to try to pick out the most sincere people. Please, put my name on the list. I said, I'm really sincere. <laughs> I, I really want to get the decision. How can you say you are sincere yourself? So he put me down and took the list up to Swamiji. And Swamiji began calling for people one by one. After the third person, when my name wasn't called, I became a little worried. Then after the fourth person, I was really sitting on the head. Then when they called the fifth person and it wasn't me, I was totally destroyed. I felt, oh, he's going to India and then he's going back to Krishna. I just lost my chance. This is, there is no use for me living anymore. I was trying to make it to the coat rack and get my coat and get out before anybody could see me crying. I hadn't started crying, but I could tell it, it was it was coming. A couple of people patted me and uh, the back and said, it's all right. He can write you a letter and tell you your name. All I could think was, yeah, the way he was talking tonight, it may never happen. I could barely stand up. I went outside and started talking across, walking across the parking lot, lot towards Golden Park Gate Park. Uh, I was kind of uh, heading towards the Golden Gate Bride. I thought I will just jump up. I hadn't been, I hadn't been there long enough to understand that. If you commit suicide, you have to become a ghost. I just figured out, figured my life was useless. I got about halfway across the parking lot when the idea struck me. What if he decided to take one more and I was out of out there somewhere? The thought filled me. With, the much, with so much hope that I turned around and ran back to the temple. And just I walked in the front of the temple, Janaki ran down and said, He will take one more. Wow. And she grabbed, some, she grabbed somebody else and ran up to the cell. I fell my knees. I fell, my knees started to collapse and tears came jumping out my, my, my eyes. Asha Rani was standing there and she was she grabbed me and, and by the arm and said, Come with me. She raised up the stairs, pulling me to the top and burst into Swamiji's room without even knocking. Swamiji looked up with amazement. She said, Swamiji, you have to visit this boy. I was just bawling, and Swamiji began to laugh. He said, it's all right, don't cry. Everything will be all right. He chanted, he chanted on my feet and gave me the name Jivananda. <laughs> wow. The next morning, Prabhupada had to leave his affectionate followers. Several 
cars filled with devotees accommodated him to San Francisco airport. Nandarani some were sincere and some were crying because it was appropriate to cry when the sin master lives. Actually, none of us really knew much about what the spirit master was. Janaki mischievously stole the ticket, stole the ticket and passport from Papa's hand. Now you can go, she said. That is all right. He smiled. I already have my body ticket. I'm Indian. They will let me. <laughs> they will let me to my own country. Prabhupada turns to his adoring followers, gathered close around him at the boarding gates. Actually, I have only one desire. And whoever does this will please me very much. Now, I have a temple in New York, in Montreal, and a temple in San Francisco. But I do not have any temple in Los Angeles. He told them to remain in Christian consciousness and to please preach. They watched as he turned and walked through the gates. He came and in one hand boarding pass in the in the other. In New York, there was hardly time for sadness. Shri Prabhupada's telegraph telegraph Sri Krishna Pandit that his arrival in Delhi will be on July 40, 24th at 7:30 a.m. and that Sri Krishna Pandit should prepare Prabhupada's quarters at the Tipiwara temple. In the, the telegram, Prabhupada mentioned his intention to consult a physician in Delhi and then go to Vrindavan. He was anxious to return to Vrindavan. The day before his departure, Prabhupada wrote to Swami to Sumati Moraji. In reply to his last letter, she had agreed to provide free, to provide free steamship passage to India for him, but not for his disciple. As I, I had arranged for you passage to America, she had written, I think it is my duty to see that you return back to India safely. More should, more should you to your indifferent health. But she would not allow free passage to any disciple. On July 20, Prabhupada wrote, I'm feeling too much to return to Vrindavan, to the little feet of Vrindavan Bihari, Lord Krishna, and therefore, I have decided to return to India immediately. I would have liked to return via sea, <laughs> as you have no kind, have you so kindly offered me passage in your letter. But in my precarious state of health, that is not possible. So by the mercy of Krishna and through the one friend here, Somehow or other, I have received her passage and I am expecting to leave here for New Delhi on Saturday, night, Saturday next, reaching the Palam Airport on 24th instant at 7.30 a.m. From there, I shall proceed to Vrindavan after a few days rest in Delhi. I can understand that at present, you cannot allow me free passage to my disciples. But if you don't do so, at least in the near future, then my mission will be half finished or failure. I'm um, just uh, enclosing one letter of appreciation for one of my principal students, Bruce Schaff from Prof. 
Professor Davis Heron and another from Professor Roberts of New York University. Oh yeah, uh, Bruce. Uh, the first time president is called New York. All right, good. I think these letters will convince you how much my movements of Christian consciousness is taking ground in the Western world. The holy name of uh, Hare Krishna is now being chanted not only in this country but also in England, Holland, and Mexico. That I know that I know of. It may be even more widespread. I've sent you one gramophone record, which I hope you may have received by this time. You will enjoy to learn how Krishna's holy name is being appreciated by the Western world. Achuntananda told Prabhupada he wanted to go to India and study intensively, gather experience and become attached to Krishna. He had heard Prabhupada say that one could become more Krishna conscious, conscious in two days <laughs> in Brindavan than in ten years in America. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I will be able to go? Akitananda asked. Rest assured, Prabhupada told him, we will meet you again in Braja. Devotees had been asking Satarupa to transfer his several service job to Boston and open a Krishna Consul Center there. They had also asked Rupanuga to do the same in Buffalo. Satarupa and Raguna Rupanuga approached Prabhupada to find out what he wanted. He became very pleased. Shubara was going to open a center in Santa Fe, he said, and Dayananda was going to Los Angeles. He had a Krishna mantra is like a big cannon. He told them, go and sound this cannon so everyone can hear it and it will drive away Maya. The devotees wanted to ask, but what if you don't return? They were fearful. What if Krishna skipped Swamiji in Vrindavan? What if Swamiji never returned? How could they survive against Maya? But Swamiji had already assured them that whatever Krishna consciousness he had given them would be enough even if he never returned. Just 30 minutes before he had to leave for the airport, Prabhupada sat in his room, in his room ch ch chanting on the beats of a girl who had asked to be initiated. Then, as he had done many times before, he left his apartment, went down there, crossed the courtyard and entered the storefront. Sitting on the old carpet, he spoke quietly and personally. I may be going, but Guru Maharaj and the Bhakti Vinod are here. He looked towards the painting of his spiritual master and Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I have asked them to kindly take care of you, to take care of all of you, my spiritual children. The grandfather always takes care of the child much better than the father. So do not fear. There is no question of separation. The sound vibration fixes us up together. That even though the material body may not be there. What do you, what what do you what do we care of his material body? Just go on chanting. Hare Krishna, and we will be packed up together. You will be chanting here, and I will be chanting there. And this vibration will circulate around the, this planet. Yeah, that is the importance of, you know, 
Все вам Бабуга. Физикал пресенс оф Гуис is very is good also. But uh, Vani and Vani instruction is also very very important. Yeah, so the uh, the sub vibration fix up together. You will chant yeah, and I will be chanting there. And this vibration will circulate around the planet. Several devotees rode with propers in the taxi. Brahmananda in the front with the driver. Raya Rama and Kitananda in the back beside the city master. When Kitananda sees Brindavan, Prabhupada said, I will not be able to, to understand how I could have left that place and come to this place. It is so nice. There are no motor cars there like here. Rushing, whoosh. Rushing, whoosh, whoosh. And smiling. Only there is Krishna. It's Hare Krishna. Everybody always chanting. Thousands of thousands of, and of temples. I will show you, Kitananda. We will walk all about there and I will show you. Barmananda began to cry and Prabhupada patted him on the back. I can understand that you are feeling separation, he said. I'm feeling for my Guru Maharaj. I think this is what Krishna desire. You may be coming there to me and be turning up and we will spread this movement all over the world. Rai Rama, you will go to England. Barmananda, you want to go to Japan or Russia? That's all right. The devotees converge on the hair on the hair and the waiting room near the crowded cocktail lounge wearing a sweater is chadhar folded neatly over his shoulder Prabhupada sat in the chair the disciple sat as closely as possible around his feet he felt an umbrella just as when he had first come alone to New York almost two years ago. Although exhausted, he was smi smiling. Prabhupada noted a mural of India women carrying large jar on their heads, and he called the name of a young girl who had recently gone with her husband Amsaduta to join the East Coast Center in Montreal. Imavati, would you like to go to India and learn to carry this water pot like this Indian woman? <laughs> yes, yes, she said, I will go. Yes, Shabapat said, someday we will go, we will all go. Kitananda was carrying a portable battery operated phonograph and two copies of the Hare Krishna Mantra record. Kitananda, Kitananda, Prabhupada asked, why not play the record? They will enjoy. Kitananda played the record very softly. It sound catching the attention of the people in the cocktail lounge. Make it a little louder. Prabhupada asked, and Kitananda increased the volume. Prabhupada began nodding his head, keeping time. Soon the devotees began roaming along with the record and then quietly sing until gradually they were singing loudly. Kitananda, Brahmananda and other devotees began to cry. Amsaruta. I was sitting right next to Swamiji and all the time I was thinking, oh my sister master is going to India and he said, I want to die in Vrindavan. We all knew Swamiji was going, but now it was the last moment. It was also seen that I hadn't done anything for my sister master. He doesn't even know who I am, I thought. There is no relationship. I must do something. I must do something now. 
I must serve him in some way which will establish some place in his heart. Something I was thinking, what can I do? I was crying. <coughs> and he didn't even look at me. It was like I wasn't even there, just like a chair or something. He was just always looking around and everything. And I was trying to catch his eyes. If all of a sudden he would say something. The kitten was getting heavier and heavier. And so was the crime. And the people in the waiting room were just looking at Swami like he was someone very special. And in the middle of it all, Swami was completely relaxed. As if this were his place and this was just a normal thing to do. <coughs> so how long will we continue? Till 11. When the daily court ended, Nam Sadhuta asked, Swamiji, can I take a collection? Prabhupada nodded. Nam Sadhuta stood and made a little speech. Our mission is to spread Krishna consciousness. We have a temple in New York. We are always badly in need of money. Please help us. Borrowing a heart from a soldier, Amsaduta went around taking collection. <laughs> Our traveling is very auspiciously beginning. Prabhupada said, we have a nice sedan and we had a nice collection. It is all Krishna mercy. Then it was time to, to board the pay. Prabhupada embraced each of his men. They stood in line and one after one, one after another, approached him and embraced him. He patted a few of the women of the women on the head. Upanuga. So when he was embracing the man, Kitananda Brahmananda Gargamuni, I never expected that he would ask me to step forward. I did not consider myself in the same category with the other devotees, so I was very much surprised when Swamiji motioned to me and asked me and asked and spoke my name, Rupanuga. I got up and uh, walked to Swamiji. It might have been 10 feet, but it seems like a long distance. I embraced him, and that embrace was the most memorable embrace of my life. Right away, I noticed Shri Prabhupada's strength. I was so, it was so strong. It was like embracing a, a young man, and a man, man my age. I was 20, 27, and he seemed even stronger and younger than me, than I. And he, he hugged me tightly, and I also embraced him very firmly. He was smaller than me in stature, so I instantly buried my chin in the, in the hollow, hollow of his left shoulder. While I was embracing him, embracing him, I felt very blissful and I felt a light. I felt there was a light, something bright and pure, some kind of energy emanating from my face. I opened my eyes and I saw Kitananda watching. He was standing behind Swamiji, a few feet away and I looked right into his eyes and I was so happy and beautiful that it's reflected in him in him somehow. He broke into his a big smile, smile at me, and his eyes were very bright. It was as if some spiritual energy was actually emanating from him. That airport scene was a very important was very important part of my life because 
For me, a person who always had difficulty in loving another person, so means he is living force out of out a lot of love from my heart. I didn't even know was there. It's like becoming a special person when you feel love really developing for the spiritual master. I was becoming a spiritual person. I was uh, a tremendous uh, outpouring of feeling of separation and grief at his departure because we all knew he was our life and soul. And to a person, none of us were sure we would ever see him again. Accompanied by Kitananda, whose head was shaven and uh, who wore an incongruous black woolen suit, Prabhupada walked slowly towards the gates, and as he disappeared from view, the devotee ran for the observation desk deck to get the last look of his departure plane. Departing plane. A gentle rain was washing the air felt and the devotees raced across and wet observation desk deck. There below there below were Prabhupada and Kitananda working towards their plane, mm -hmm. abandoning the quorum, the devotees began to shout. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada turned and waved. Mm -hmm. He climbed mm -hmm. the movable stairway, turned away at the top and raising, raising his arms and then entered the plane. Yeah, okay. The devotee chanted wildly while the boarding step moved away. The door closed and the plane began to turn. The devotees had pressed close to the rail, but they pulled back as the jets started blasted them with heat. With the great roar of the air in the jet lights blinking, taxied out of the runaway, the devotees continued to chant Hare Krishna until the plane left the ground, became a speck in the sky, and then disappeared. Wow. So this is the end of the chapter. And I'll stop here. So this is very interesting. This day you cannot have this chance, because when you go to airport, the only traveler is allowed to enter. <laughs> Yeah, this is very important to read, uh, you know, you know, properly Lamrita, to energize ourselves, to to really know what is the, you know, the uh, uh, relationship between disciple and guru. It's very very important. You know, the loving exchange between the guru and the disciple is very 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 important. Yeah, feel separation. Yeah, so we have to learn from from. This book and actually any devotee who don't, don't read this properly Lamrita I don't really begun is uh, Krishna consciousness very very important to read this book to know how the old man sacrificed his life how much he gave love to his disciples hmm? yeah so it's very important any question any comment Yes. Uh, you, you, are, you are here also for uh, celebrating, I guess, the memory and the, the, the separation and disappearance uh, of the Bhagavad Bhakti Tata Swami. Yeah. So, uh, what, what may be your realization between simultaneously the same thing, you know, like here, mm. departure of your Prabhupada? Mm. And it's also two different personalities, of course, for mm. different reasons. Yeah. So how do you feel the same difference? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Because uh, the, uh, 
connection between the disciple and the, the guru is all, all, almost the same. It's always the same. So when uh, anytime uh, Sheila Baptista Maharaj will visit uh, West Africa, so we, we, are, we, are, we are very happy. But we know that uh, it's time for, for him to, to, to leave back to America. So when, they, when that time arrives, then we are always very sad. We, we always accompany him to the airport also. And uh, the, the, the painful moment is when he, you know, he's entering a place where we are not allowed. And he say like that, bye bye. And until next year again, before you see him. So it's really painful. But uh, we have to, you know, learn how to, to love in separation also. That's very important. Yeah. Vanivafu is also important. So yes, we will be feeling that. And especially when uh, this one is just traveling back to India. And when the Guru physically, you know, leave the planet, that is even more painful. But uh, with the teaching, with the remembrance of his activities, yes can keep ourselves alive. Otherwise it's really, you know, not easy. Very, very painful. Yeah. <coughs> Any other point? Thank you.